Welcome to working with spot color with Affinity Designer. Okay, so here's just a file here. Now, spot color, whether it's the American spelling or it's the English spelling, nonetheless, we're just going to work with that. So let's just set things up. You might notice that um, I haven't really worried about any spot color colors there at the moment. So we're just going to set that up. And again, we're going to work with Pantone spot color. And we're just going to do a two color job. And what we're going to do is also run images right to the edge of the page or even over the page using this thing that's called bleed. And here's a bleed line at the bottom. So let's just go and set up a file and output it into a PDF artwork uh, two color spot color format. So I'm just going to go file new. And here we come up and we've got our uh, presets that we can choose here. And basically I just want A4. I'm going to go just to a landscape. Now at the bottom here, it, there is a 3mm bleed. Quite often that might be zero, but it's because I've been using that. And of course, you'd set up your margins here as well. And now what we've also got is just uh, different settings here. I'm just going to stay with uh, CMYK 8-bit, and that's going to be great to start off with. Not going to go to anything like transparent, because this is going to be an intention for print. And you'll see up here, it says press ready. Not just print, but press ready, and it's really with the output we want. So anyway, let's go and create this. So here's this file. By the way, if you don't have your bleed, I'll just command zero just to fit it in there. And there's our bleed area. You can always go at any stage just down here. You'll see document set up, and we can add our bleed in here, provided you click on the bleed tab. Of course, we've got other dimensions and color there as well, but that's fine for now with the bleed. So let's go and just create some artwork. I'm going to make this really, really simple. But what I want to do is I want to bring in um, the right color. So here's some swatches at the top here. Now this is not RGB or anything I use here can run into problems. Things like effects, styles, anything with this 3D type effect is going to really need to be rendered in CMYK. So it's not what we want. If you want to bring in some Grayscale Photoshop TIFFs, or any, not just Photoshop, but um, basically Affinity Photo perhaps, but keep it as a grayscale image to color up, particularly if it's a Photoshop image, bring it in as a grayscale TIFF. Grayscale is the secret there. And TIFF, tag image file format. Anyway, let's just go back here and uh, back onto layers or really just something that I don't click on for any styles or anything like that. I'm gonna go up to swatches here. And this is where you can actually add in some Pantone colors. Now you do have here, you can actually get a whole lot of different Pantones. And what we're looking for is um, basically solid. So anything that says solid is what we really want it. To, um, now it doesn't matter if it's coated or uncoated, it just means that it's to print on sort of smoother, not shiny necessarily, but smooth paper to give a really solid coated stock type feel. Uncoated is very more textured stock. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start from scratch because I do want to be in swatches. I'm going to click up on the tab that's just maybe just out of view just a little bit here. Just bring this in so we can see it. And if I just click on that, we are swatches. And I'm going to come down here and I essentially I want to bring in my swatches color. And you might see that it's not there. So I just come up to add a global color. Now global colors are really good because whenever you change it, you don't want to end up with lots of different colors. You will drop a color in and then you select other things. Or you might want to change one to only stay with your three colors or two colors or one color, whatever it is. It will globally change everything. So it's a safe way of doing it. So global colors here. And I'm just going to go through and uh, there's some swatch colors. And if you hold your, your mouse, you can see what they are. And that's just the color I want, I'm going to go Pantone 100, and uh, basically it should load that one in there. Now, um, with the swatches, you can name it up here too. Uh, it's going to be just, I'm just going to put yellow 100. It will keep the names when we output it. You'll see what I mean in just a minute, but I'm going to go yellow 100. You don't really need to name it. I'm just doing this to make it a lot easier. And of course, what I want here is spot. And I'm going to do some overprinting as well, it means I can put color over color and uh, something just to consider when you're putting things together. A little bit tricky when you're doing spots. And I'm going to just go add. And here it is. And you can see it's a spot color. See that little spot down here? So that's one color. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and do another color. So swatch is here. You got it. I'm going to click here, add global color. And again, I'm just going to stay on these. And just to get a nice contrast in color, I'm going to go Pantone Dark Blue. So Dark Blue, which C is for coated. Remember, U is for uncoated. So I'll just click that in there and I'll go add. And now here's my color. So that's the only colors that we want to use in our document here. So what I might just do is I'll just drag this back to fit the view here. As I say, it really doesn't matter what the design is. I'm just going to say nice and simple here. I want some artistic text. I'm going to just grab it out like so. And I'm just going to go, um, what's a good word for that? Spot. Okay, now I've gone a little bit big there. So what I might do is just drag it in just to fit a little bit better. And just command zero to fit it back into the screen. And... That is my first color here. Now what I'm going to do is also want to use bleed. So I'm going to just uh, option drag this one down by the way as well. And then I'm just going to put a nice little background on the back here. And just bring that through and just line it up. So here's my design. You see how I'm dragging, snapping it to the, the bleed area? Okay, oops, just need to bring that down a little bit more. Great. Right. Now with this, what I want to do is send it to the back and see these little icons up here, just at the top, move to back, and that's perfect. Right, let's get going with these colors. So the first one here, I'm just going to click on the yellow, and that's going to um, obviously change that color. I'm just going to go back and snip on my type tool here and just put that with the blue there. And this bottom one, I'm just going to go to yellow. Okay. So this is two spot colors. So let's go and output that now. I might or I should just save that somewhere. And I'm just going to call it spot colors. Let's call it spot, make it easy. And so I'm going to save that. So we need to output now. So remember, we've got our bleed on. That's going to be really important. We've got our design all completed here. So I just need to go file and I come down to export. Now when you export, PDF is definitely what we're doing this. We're working with artwork, and that's the out ways you, that you do output it here. So there's some basically presets here to take you through the output that you require. Uh, for print or press ready is fine, etc., but not so important for um, the actual output in terms of be careful that you don't go to CMYK. But I'm just going to go to digital high quality here. Press, particularly if you're working with something like Adobe, means that it's going to be CMYK by default, etc. So I've just got a high quality here, but what I do want is to make sure it's 300 DPI, and I do want to include the bleed as well. Now you're going to see this more tab down the bottom, I'm going to just go and click on that. And if we go down here, one thing I really do want, uh, always overprint black, and it's not letting me do that. Why? There's no black in the file, so I don't have to worry about that. But if we go through here, include printer's marks, my goodness, yes, we want all the artwork to be visible for us. This is actually artwork. So click on that. And the main two things really is nice and simple, just leaving it as it is at the moment. Now, there is a, a quality thing, nearest neighbor. This is like Photoshop um, by Linear and by Cubic. It really doesn't matter with this vector one at the moment. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Very, very simple graphics as well. Uh, color space here, well, it is sort of CMYK we're going to, but we're going to spot, so it really sort of doesn't matter, except for perhaps we can see that um, we are working um, with a CMYK print, etc. here, but we certainly don't want it to be CMYK colors. Now, I've just got sort of the profiles that are here as well. I'm just going to basically just leave it on default, and the color space is probably not that important either because we've dictated our colors up here. Let's go and take it to artwork. So basically, I'll just go close. We've got our trim marks, our um, registration marks, and our bleed marks. I just go export now. So I'm just exporting, and I'm just going to save that to a, a PDF. So that's the format, and which was also selected. And now if I bring that back in here, here we are. We're in our spot colors. And here's our artwork with the bleed you can see in there, named as well. It's all set to go. This is what we give to the printer. Now, what you really have to consider is that with the tools here, 
you will see um, the option to go to um, print production. I've got mine turned on anyway. There is print production there, and that will just add it to the tab here. So back to spot. I'm going to click on the print production tab to check it. Um, and up here is the output preview. Let's go and have a look at this. And if I bring this in like so, there is my spot colors. And hello, what's going on here? If I just turn off all of these, we should just have um, just the spot plates and working with the Pantone dark blue, the yellow 100, and these should be the only ones that are visible. In fact, I can turn them all off here. And this might not be coming out as blue as we wanted there, but it's correct artwork because there it is ticked here down the bottom. So when I sort of click everything on, it sort of reveals it there. But what I have to make sure is that I don't have any extra colors in there except for these two. So if I turned all of these off, everything should disappear. I know I'm only using spot colors because I click on my spot color plate. So there, my friends, is creating spot color. You can have as many as you want, but usually you just do spot color. You want specials, uh, limited colors that are in the file, or using flex and other colors like silver and gold or anything, such as a logo, to put it together. So thank you for watching.